Hi, everyone, and welcome back. A sincere thank you for being a part of the program. I hope you're coming back from what was a wonderful, joyous, restful Thanksgiving holiday where you got to eat and shop and rest and celebrate as much as you so desired, or, or at least a little of some, if not all of those. We are glad to have you back. And, hey, we're back to December, December the 2nd, can you believe it? And that starts the official countdown 22 days until Christmas. That means a lot of things are going to be going on. We're all going to be so busy throughout the holidays. And here at the newsroom, well, more so than ever possibly, in addition to it being the holidays and all the associated events, we've got a great deal of news coming up. Can't tell you about it all. Don't have it all done as of right now. We've got some stories in the works, and I'm expecting some other developing stories to come to fruition between now and the first of the year. And we'll be covering those, of course, in great detail. Tonight, we'll be covering in great detail. And it's the only place you're going to see an in-depth look into sex offenders here in McGoffin County, other counties, and Operation Scenic Trails. It's not what it sounds like. A sex offender compliance check conducted by authorities on the local and federal level and state level as well. A couple of weeks ago in several counties, including McGoffin and Morgan and others, and a press release today held in Hampton. We'll take you to the Justice Center there. I'll be the only one to take you there, and we'll talk about how successful it was, what they learned, and what they found upon trying to contact every sex offender in the respective counties op involved in Operation Scenic Trails. That will be our focal point in a few moments. And, of course, your weather forecast, it's got 70s, it's got 30s, it's got rain, it's got snow, it's got clouds, uh, it's got sun, it's got it all. The question is, when's it coming? Several days of rain possibly on end in the week and the weekend, our annual Saggers of Hometown Christmas. I'll tell you what's cooking there in just a few moments. While we're still at least a month or so from the unofficial beginning of what is often the peak of the flu season, cases are already being documented of flu in Kentucky. And as a result, our state is now one of four across the nation that's been designated as having regional flu status. That's one rung low on the ladder, so to speak, of widespread status. As always, healthcare providers are reminding us that the very best of defenses is to get a flu shot. If you haven't, it's certainly not too late, and it is your best line of defense. And as always, those common sense practices that we sometimes get in the habit of not doing, which we should do year-round, wash your hands, cover your mouth, stay at home, or keep those children at home if they are sick from spreading any illness. That's the best advice we can have. That's just an update on the flu. Sad to say, it's going to continue to pick up. We have no idea as to what the flu season holds for us, but being prepared is the best bet. Well, I can tell you that one Eastern Kentucky team is, is still on the gridiron. And in fact, from the initial 32 teams in Class 3A high school football, there's only two still standing, and the Belfry Pirates. Their coach, of course, named the best coach in the nation, Philip Haywood, just recently. They're rolling on. After wins over, I want to make sure I get this right, Jackson County, Lawrence County, Pike Central, and Bourbon County, it's now Belfry and Wayne County at the Hutchins Foe Field, I believe it is, Hutchins L.T. Smith Stadium. The championship is this Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. That's right, they are one win away from becoming state champions. However, in their midst, as I said, Wayne County. In Class 3A football on the high school level, Wayne County is undefeated, 14-0. Belfry, they've got one loss. They're 13-1. We wish them well. With that said, we're getting closer to Operation Scenic Trails, a sex offender compliance check conducted in McGoffin, Morgan, and other counties on the 12th day of November. I'll have an in-depth coverage for you coming up in just a few moments. Ho, ho, whoa! Head over to Home Furniture to lighten my load and get a great deal. <laughs> Bundle packages are here. Purchase TVs, receive your choice of a Blu-ray, DVD, Xbox 360, or Wii game system. Purchase a mattress set, get a free sheet set and mattress pad. Purchase an adult recliner, receive a free kids recliner. Financing for 36 months, 0% interest to qualified buyers. <laughs> Home Furniture, Islands Plaza, Prestonsburg. It's so new, it doesn't even have a name, but it does have an amazing taste all its own. Four pancakes, butter, syrup, plus 
your choice of any of our dozens of DQ toppings with a little whipped cream on top and, of course, some of our world-famous DQ soft serve. And you can add bacon, sausage, or even a little country ham for a full-blown breakfast treat. So sink your taste buds into a quarter or even half-pound grill burger fixed exactly like you like. And you want to know the best part? James says you can have either one for breakfast as early as you want, but only at your Sagersville DQ. From time and money saving services like their overdraft protection, telephone and online banking services, to finding the right home, college or car loan, to personalized checking and savings accounts designed around your exact needs, Sagersville National Bank is still your best choice and the same locally owned and operated bank that's been looking out for your family's financial health since 1902. Sagersville National, restoring the piggy bank population one savings at a time. They've got muck boots for the hills and the mud, work boots for on and off the job, like the newest and maybe most comfortable, hardest working Red Wing ever. They've got Western boots for kicking up your heels and a whole new store full of the newest styles from all the famous makers you love, like Wrangler, Carhartt, Ariat, Miss Me, Leathers by Scully, and more at the brand spanking new Red's Boot Barn in Sagersville. Hi, I'm Don McFarland, and I want to be your family lawyer. Sometimes we all have troubles in our life, and when we do, it's good to have a friend that you can call on and during times of legal trouble. Please give me a call. I have been here my entire life. I was born here. I was raised here. I have a family here, and I've practiced law here since 1994. So if you ever have pain, if you ever have trouble, if you are ever in need, then pick up the phone and call Donald Wayne, 349-9000. Check out our daily specials that get even better after 4 o'clock only at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe. On Tuesdays, get an all-white three-piece breast strip meal with your choice of two homemade sides and a biscuit for just $4.39. And it's only $3.89 after 4 p.m. only at your Sagersville Lee's. The 12th installment, if you will, of Operation Scenic Trails involved authorities on the city, county, state, and federal level targeting seven counties, including McGoffin and Morgan and others. Altogether, 2,400 sex offenders have been targeted and reached out and contacted directly by authorities for compliance checks. I'll get to that report in great detail, and it's the only place you're going to see it in just a few moments. Before we can, though, let's check out the community calendar for this first week of December. The following, as always, brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau. With announcements over a beautiful sunrise which you're not going to be seeing the likes of very often in tonight's forecast. Uh, I'll get to that. That's a whole other story, but we'll get to it in just a few moments. A reminder, Mr. Howard at the McGuff County High School's Agriculture Department reminds everyone that FFA fruit orders for Christmas will be taken through December the 6th. That's this Friday, and fruit can be picked up on December the 13th. Always those big, beautiful fruit boxes. Most often they have nuts and hams as well. A great Christmas gift, a great snack for yourself throughout the holidays, and, of course, a great cause. Call 349-5188 to place an order, find out more, or you can always contact any FFA student. No picking and grinning for December, but Merry Christmas to you from the Kearney Free Will Baptist Church. And from our friend Debbie Sweeney, a memory and learning styles lesson is going to be presented at elementary and middle schools throughout McGoffin County, the middle school and elementary schools, for fourth and seventh grade students. It's a memory and learning styles lesson, improving a student's memory and learning styles. And any parent who wants to find ways to improve their child's memory is invited to observe the lesson at one of the following schools. Here are the times. The first one is at South McGoffin tomorrow morning at 10, then Sagersville Grade School Wednesday morning at 9.30, the Middle School in McGoffin County, Thursday at 8.15. The North McGoffin Elementary, Friday at 10.30. Parents, caregivers, grandparents, anyone wanting to find a way to improve your child's memory, you're invited to come and observe the lesson, and you can do so at one of these times and locations. The joy of Christmas will be here before you know it, and I'll be giving you our first forecast for the big annual holiday event in Sagersville in a few moments, but the Sagersville Hometown Christmas Extravaganza is this Saturday, opening ceremonies at 3. 
from the Historical Society cabins. The tree lighting is at 5.30 at the tree there next to the Sayersville National Bank. And then the parade will start at 6, and it ends with Santa and toys at the fire department. And, of course, a whole lot of caroling and food and fun in between all of that. We hope you'll join us and participate in our 7th Annual Sayersville Hometown Christmas. It's all this Saturday. We'll be talking about it more throughout the week. This is how you get announcements just like these on the program. Post Office Box 1443 here in Sagersville. Our phone is 3699. Fax is 3493221. Your news today at yahoo.com. I'm on Facebook with everybody else in the free world under Ritter Mortimer, and we're at 507 East Maple Street here if you want to drop it by the newsroom. With that said, funeral service announcements brought to you tonight as a service on behalf of our friends at the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Listings tonight begin with those in honor of 60-year-old Mary Louise Reisner Roark of Burning Fork Road in Sayersville, who passed away this past Friday, preceded in death by her husband, Patrick Roark. In her passing, she leaves behind her son, Jerry Roark, and daughter, Patty Collinsworth. Services for Mary Reisner Roark are going to be conducted tomorrow morning at 11 from the chapel at the Sayersville Funeral Home. The family will begin to welcome friends at 6 o'clock this evening and will do so again tomorrow, anytime prior to services. Once again, they start tomorrow morning at 11 in her honor. Also from the Sagersville Funeral Home, 46-year-old Tammy Shepherd Poe of Mining Fork Road passed away on Sunday. The daughter of Stella Joseph Weirman and the late Orville Shepherd, she leaves behind in her passing her husband, Robert Ray Poe, sons, William Cleek, Robert Bradley, Austin Blake Blanton, and daughter Courtney Hitz. Funeral services for Tammy Shepherd Poe are going to be held Wednesday at morning, excuse me, Wednesday morning at 11 from the Licking River Baptist Church in Sagersville. Burial will follow the ceremony at the Joseph Cemetery in Royalton. The family will welcome friends this evening, tomorrow after 10, and anytime Wednesday prior to services at the church. They also would like to Remind everyone that contributions can be made in lieu of flowers to the Tammy Poe Memorial Fund at the Sagersville Funeral Home. Sagersville Medical Center is proud to welcome their newest provider and member of the family, family nurse practitioner Erica Blackburn. Caring for children's sick and well visits, adult acute and chronic conditions, and women's health issues. And they're pleased to invite you to join them for a meet and greet in her honor and yours on Friday, December the 13th from 3 to 5 at Sagersville Medical Center. They're serving refreshments and giving away door prizes. You don't have to be present to win, but they look forward to seeing you as they embark on their exciting future with their newest provider, Erica Blackburn, family nurse practitioner. At the end of every race, Mark Martin hangs up his driving gloves. He hangs up his fire suit. And he hangs up his helmet. Which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra. At Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Here's a prime example of some of the nice trade-ins we get here at Premier Motor Sales in Paintsville, Kentucky. You're looking at a 2007 model Chevy Avalanche LT with the towing package and the wood grain dash. It is a four-wheel drive. Check the book value, folks. Well over the asking price, only $16,950 or best offer. Come see us at Premier Motor Sales here in Paintsville, Kentucky. Howdy, Hatfield. I reckon I'll take my pig back. Ain't your pig. Yeah, it is. No, it ain't. Yeah, it is, and I can prove it. Ma, I just sent a picture of our missing pig. Tell everybody it's time to start feuding. Oh, for heaven's sake. I guess ain't gonna be no feud. Real nice picture, though. Well, put it on Instagram. Appalachian Wireless is 4G. Great pictures, video, text, and talk. Bigger savings, better service. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. 2014 Terexes are in with a newly redesigned 800cc power plant and a new two-seat configuration. And the XP1000 is on the ground. 107 horsepower and a world-class suspension. Plus Polaris financing as low as 2.99%, 5.99 for up to 72 months. But it's only good till the end of the year at Conley's Kawasaki and Polaris of Paintsville.
It's a time to cherish and a time to remember the reason and to pause and relish in the joy and spread the spirit of the Christmas season. And it's best done with a holiday stop at the seasonal shop in Sagersville where the trees from simple to lavish are all gleaming with Christmas cheer and where the decor, the colors, textures, and designs all come together as we hope will your family and friends this Christmas. So let the seasonal shop help brighten your home with a little festive decorating from an ornament to adorn your tree or a complete collection to warm your hearts and homes. The region's biggest and brightest selection of holiday decor this side of the North Pole is at Brazier's Prater Drug Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Sagersville Nursing and Rehabilitation Center is proud to announce the newest members of our family, Administrator Elaine Jones and our full-time chaplain Mark Campbell and volunteer Richard Green new faces with the same sincere desire as these to assist you and your family with short-term rehabilitation solutions or long-term nursing care needs close to home and those that you love Sagersville Nursing and Rehabilitation. I accompanied McGoffa County Sheriff Carson Montgomery to the Justice Center in Campton earlier today. It was there that he, Sagersville Police Chief Matthew Watson and officers from a great number of agencies were there to wrap up this phase of Operation Scenic Trails, a sex offender compliance check conducted on November the 12th that for this phase at least involving these seven specific counties wrapped up today. We actually we set out with the U.S. Marshals and the Sayreville Police Department to make contact with all registered uh, sex offenders in the county which we did. We, we were successful in contacting all 25 of them. One was arrested uh, due to a prior warrant. One was in non-compliant. And those were among Operation Scenic Trails, the sex offender compliance check conducted on November the 12th in the counties of Breathitt, Jackson, Lee, McGoffin, Morgan, Owsley, and in Wolf. Participating agencies, too many to list. Police departments from Beattyville, Boonville, Jackson County, Lee County, all respective counties, Kentucky Probation and Parole, the Kentucky State Police, the U.S. Marshal's Office, and many others. They set out to contact and make checks on 21 individuals in Breathitt County, that is, 30 in Jackson County, 10 in Lee County, 25 in McGoffin County, 19 in Morgan County, 7 in Owsley, and 22 in Wolf County for a total of 134 known sex offenders. Sex offenders, the media compliance checks, uh, what this is is these are convicted uh, people of sexual crimes. They're on the Kentucky State Police Registrar for the uh, register of sex offenders. They have to comply with certain laws. And under the Adam Walsh Act, uh, the United States Marshals are uh, enacted to assist and help state and locals in uh, making sure that they are compliant and doing what they're supposed to be doing. As we go through this today, you'll see some of these people were not compliant. And that's why we do our job. As I've said earlier in, these, in some of these investigations across the state, this doesn't just affect the child when the child's abused, it affects the whole family for generations. And it, it continues on. So what we're doing, I feel, is very, very vital and very important. And it helps prevent this and may save a child's life. And if we can help save one child's life, we've done a great thing. And not all victims are children, but many are. In fact, in regards to just the seven counties involved in Operation Scenic Trails in this compliance check, in the cases where the age of the victim is known, 74% of the victims were 14 years of age or under. The youngest victim in this particular case, for example, two years of age, the oldest, 31. The thing I learned when I was coming up in law enforcement that it's better to teach boys and girls than it is to men, men and women. So it would be better if we can take these children now and show them that we're their friends and we're trying to help them instead of uh, trying to teach them after things have happened to them. In one case, uh, Chris and I went to a house and I asked the guy, I said, uh, buddy, how long have you been out of the pen? He said, 10 years. I think Chris would have told us. I said, has anybody ever checked on you before? He said, no. 
He said, you're the first time we've ever been checked. So this is important that we do this. And uh, uh, I'm glad that we are doing it and we're going to continue to do it. There's a saying that's on the state flag that I think is fitting for this is if you look in this room and the officers that are here is united we stand and divided we fall. And I think today is an example of all of us being united in the goal of protecting the children and the people in our counties and state and this nation by doing what we're, uh, what we're doing today in this uh, operation. Eight total arrests during the operation. All eight of those were for being non-compliant. Uh, some of them had additional warrants. Uh, many of these folks, you know, they're still committing crime out there. And that's why you see some additional charges. Uh, some of the folks were maybe charged in one county, arrested in another county. Uh, but uh, again, there's a total of eight sex offenders arrested. All of them were arrested, arrested because they were non-compliant. Um, one was arrested uh, for being non-compliant, had uh, weapons. Um, another, one of the eight was arrested, had a failure to, failure to pay fine warrant. And when this uh, sex offender was arrested, they had marijuana on him, so the officer charged him with possession of marijuana. Another one of the arrested sex offenders was here in Wolf County. He was a fugitive. And uh, during the operation, we received some information from law enforcement officers that were participating in the operation that he may have fled to the Western uh, District of Kentucky. And uh, the U.S. Marshal's Office uh, over in uh, Louisville apprehended this subject down in Ronnieville, which is in Hardin County, Kentucky. And uh, again, it was uh, the information came during this operation that directed us toward the Western Kentucky area. Specifically here in McGoffin County, 25 documented and registered sex offenders currently, as was the number for Operation Scenic Trails. 24, as we heard, were compliant. You can go to the Kentucky State Police website at kentuckystatepolice.org for a complete list of all those individuals, their names, their photographs, their current addresses, details about their crimes, and the ages of their victims. Of those 25 registered sex offenders, the youngest victim appears to be four years of age. The oldest, 23, the age of several, is unknown. You can go down the entire list. And you can also notice that they're not all from McGoffin County. Now, the last time I checked this list, and it's been some time ago, the number was much different. In this particular occasion, while we have 25 registered sex offenders, four, excuse me, rather five, are from out of state and have relocated to McGoffin County. A few years ago, that number was indeed much higher. Possibly some of the addresses have since changed to become permanent McGoffin County addresses. That is only an assumption. What is not an assumption is why they're moving to this area. And you may be surprised. While out of the 25 in McGoffin County, currently it shows the five have moved in, 28% of all those involved in Operation Scenic Trails were not originally residents of McGoffin County or the respective counties. Is there, is there any logistics, any reasoning why we see a considerable amount of folks moving to any particular part or Kentucky in a whole? Yes, sir. Uh, how do I quote this? I'll tell you what the gentleman told me. And not only McGoffin, but it was another county we were in. I asked him how come they moved into the county, and he said because it's easier to get on the drop. And that was a quote. He says it's easier to get on the benefits down here than the state he came from. So he came down here, and that was a quote from him, that he was easier to get on the on the draw or getting a government check coming in this in these areas. And that's that was a quote what he told me. And I think that guy moved from Michigan or somewhere. And when I asked Mr. Carl about any advice to pass along to viewers, proactive, he says, was a good word to use. And not being afraid to report or question any such activity, whether it's friend, family, or stranger, could be the biggest mistake you could make. McGoffin County Sheriff Carson Montgomery agreed. Some circumstances, it, it's, it's related to drugs, but not always, don't. You know, don't let your guard down and think it has to be related to drugs for this to happen to a child. And it's not always in a broken home or somewhere where you might suspect something like that. No, it's... it's and it's, it's not always family and it's not always strangers. That's right. It's, it, 
Most of the time, it's somebody the child is very familiar with, comfortable with, and they just get in an uncomfortable situation that they can't help. So it, it's very important to uh, protect your children. Uh, always be on the lookout for something like that. That was the And while this is the 12th operation within the totality of this particular event, 2,400 sex offenders targeted, this being Operation Scenic Trails, authorities were quick to remind us that this is an ongoing situation, one they'll be closely monitoring with promises of coming back to the area perhaps sooner than later. And with our top story over and done with for now, here's the forecast and our outlook for the week and the weekend, specifically, what's happening for our Sagersville hometown Christmas, the parade, and all the fun things around it? Well, I'll get there slowly, surely, and with a little rain, possibly a lot of rain in the middle. Let's begin with tonight. Actually, let's start with today. A 30 low this morning, a high of 58, a little above average. It's been a nice day, cloudy, but certainly comfortable. We'll get back down to 40 tonight under mostly cloudy skies and possibly a little drizzle between 1 and 3 in the morning. Now, that drizzle should end during the overnight and then leave us tomorrow with clouds giving way to some sunshine and then going back to cloudy skies before Tuesday's all said and done. We've got a lot of warm air rushing in, but you know what's coming with it, don't you? 62 tomorrow, a low of 47. We'll see calm winds. We'll see dry conditions tomorrow, 
clouds, sunshine, and then clouds. And then it's on the back side of that that things will start to maybe give way to some showers. Eventually, still partly sunny, but still all that warm air building in on your Wednesday. A 20% chance of showers after 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll start to see winds pick up. 9 to 22 mile per hour gusts are expected this time on Wednesday. And that chance of showers increases throughout the course of Wednesday and certainly into Wednesday night. About a 50% chance of some rain, mainly after 1 a.m. Wednesday night. Mostly cloudy skies and then the pattern changes to rain and yeah that says get used to it no other way to put it rain on your thursday we'll still see some reasonably warm air 61 for your high 41 for your low but we're going to see rain across the board and right now two to three inches of rainfall is to be expected for the viewing area over the course of this event that will last possibly late wednesday night but certainly more so on your thursday into your friday where it's rainy again all day all night and then the colder air starts to filter in not cold enough yet to switch anything over 46 for your high 28 for your low at the end of your work week but it's still raining by friday night well things should start to taper off and after about 48 hours of rain like i said two to even more inches possibly of rain I said more, not four. Two to possibly more inches of rain is expected and certainly in the realm of possibility. Now, for the big question, possibly the biggest question in the forecast period, what's in store for Saturday in our hometown Christmas celebration in Sagersville? Well, it's going to feel more like Christmas. That's right. We'll go from the upper 60s, possibly 70s throughout the parts of the midweek to the upper 30s on your Saturday. It's going to be calm and clear during the day, partly sunny skies, but then we've got another round of precipitation, and guess what? It could be in the form of snow, and right now there is indeed a chance. There's a chance we'll see a few flakes flying about during the Christmas celebration. The timing is still way too far out to call, but we've got a shot. We also got a lot of rain, albeit accompanied with some warm air, before we get anywhere close to all this. So, with that said, it's about as far as I'm willing to go with your forecast for now. Thank you so much for being a part of the program, and join us back here tomorrow night for more of your news today.